Hello there. It's been a little while since I played this game. Last week, since it's after midnight. Today's Sunday, the first day of the week. First day of the week. It has been over a week since I last played. Or very close to a week. I don't know. It's been, I think, a week and a couple days since I last played. Speaking of which, I'm going to update again. It finally starts. But I was reading. <laughs> So you do actually load as uh, I'm tabbed out. Okay.
Assassin's Creed and Marvel. say the look of this is a look of an eagle like you can find on YouTube or YouTube Google Something like that. Like this, but facing the other way. But you catch my drift. Like, haha, me as an artist, graphic designer. I can see that, where that inspiration would come from. This. But flipped. See this right here. Oh, wrong button. Uh, this right here. Oh. This part is Avor. This part is LTR. Fifteen years of Assassin's Creed. It has ended. Hallelujah. I can finally see my own uh village. We done find that in the uh, but for uh, before I fast travel over there over to here. Uh what is this? Oh, that's that. I wanted to go back up to Dwarvik because I saw something that was fairly interesting. I wanted to go check it out again. Seen your favorite characters? <gasps> Jacob, Cassandra. First, Eva. Evie, sorry. <laughs> Jacob and Evie, yeah, Cassandra, yeah. Time to play game. Oh, you can see it, you can see it right away. That thing. Glitch time. 
Actually, I should probably do this instead. What do you see, Sunan? Geronimo off. Torvik. Oof. Come on. Can I, like, uh. Actually find that stuff now? I don't know. But. Ah. It's a positive. Uh. Whoa. It's a. Ah. Oh, it's a positive villager from Minecraft. Ah. Oh. Squirrel. When the squirrel was glitching. Eh, missed. Uh, nothing, okay. <laughs> Glitchy trees! Not just when I first saw this and the other thing, I thought it was my graphics striper doing weird stuff, but no, it's actually part of the game. I hear her sound. Oh, oh, get outside. Thank you. Check that for the moment. Bex, I found another anomaly. Is that what we're calling them? And another data packet. Should I get it? If it's anything like the last one, absolutely. Oh. I can walk through part of that rock. What this?
matter which way I go. sure when I'm need, um, need to do that, but...
on the road I get over there? He has taken our son, imprisoned him for invented crimes, and cannot get away. As he said he would, love. Do you not remember his threat? You should have been more careful. Have you no power to stop him? To save our son? No recourse? What can we say? And to whom? Must the world know about our children? Must your wife learn of us? Is that a risk you want to take? I must do something. Anything. Thank <laughs> you. 
I feel like I'm playing uh, Beat Saber. <laughs> hey, are you two hearing the same voice as I'm hearing? Not sure what you mean. It's all quiet on our end. Damn it. Well, I'm at the second package. You ready? I'm ready. 
Sending it over. That was fun. Go, Zulin. Okay, I thought I heard a bird flapping. Cassandra. Jacob and Eve. <laughs> Doesn't fall an overmood, my lad, and then I could yet on a barrier. Switch it for you. It's really in a drenching on two legs.
a look, Sunan. Let's go. Run up the sail. Another one? Oh, that's probably that one. Temples. Help me with this. Come 
mon capot. Oh, oh over here. Excuse me. Slashed and disemboweled by sharp weapons. A Saxon blade from the look of it. Your death has been avenged, my friend.
game, come on. their trespasses. Send them instead to the same hell they brought upon our land. This is not your place, heathen. Did you kill these men? These defilers killed themselves by despoiling this sacred ground. God told me the full tale. Then he told me to chastise them. And he has told me much about you, too. Oh, what? Uh. Ow. Stand down, Saxon. I mean you no harm. Say that. Your time's up! Tell me again, what did your god say about me? My god names you the Crow-Eyed Devil. <laughs> and he sends out his angels to find you and to kill you. And then they will fling you into the pits of hell, demon. <laughs> okay. Thor lends me strength. <laughs> I need your eyes, my right friend. Okay. I'll go check it out.
glitch I saw. expect to find two in the same episode. Hello. Signals flickering. Another anomaly? Yeah. Are you losing touch with me when I find these? Yeah, unfortunately. For a few minutes at a time. Damn. Try to stay with me if you can. I need you to hear these. Ninja Warrior-esque huh? obstacles. Huh? Ooh, didn't even realize that was a post.
and let the current flow. Let it take you. This is... This is dangerous. It may not work. Until we have the serum, then this is all we can manage. Will you not ask the mad one for me? Ask him for the serum. Beg him for it. He would not listen. And I would sooner see our world obliterated before I gave that man a view of me on my knees. Play this from a previous game. The, uh, Egypt one. Hey, Bex, Layla's back. I can see her here. Blipping and bleeping on your monitor. Layla, hey. Bex is fiddling with the back end, trying to get a fix on you. No luck? No luck. But she did show me how to decrypt your data packets. I just click a button when you've grabbed the data bits. <laughs> click a button, that's data decryption. Nice. I got it. Be ready. <laughs> that the issue, people? Aid me. Be my eyes. Now I will go check, uh, the Animus. Sean, anything you want me searching for while I'm visiting 9th century England? Hang on. Are you asking... Are you asking because I'm English? Well, sure. I mean, you're a historian. An English historian. So I thought... Yeah. And you'd be right. Are you always this cagey? Almost never. I've emailed you a list of things I'd like you to investigate. The mutual intelligibility of Old Norse and Old English is a big one. Good question. Eivor seems to be doing fine, but I'll pay more attention. Oh, and King Alfred, the only English king to be called great. Get a good look at his face, all right? Be nice to know if his statue in Winchester is entirely accurate. I'll lean in real close, just for you. The voices in those animus anomalies. One of them is Alethea, but the other... I just don't know. How well do you know Alethea? She talked to me before through the staff. Read me through some tests simulations but i don't know if i passed or failed i haven't heard anything from her for over a year and the anomalies is she talking to you there no these sound like like overheard conversations they don't seem to know i'm listening or they don't care hmm i uploaded the data you found to our server i'll have a closer listen when i have time good idea Like your man, your way. Whoa, it's 
first time it's happened inside a uh, inside housing house. Let's have a look. guy in the middle looks like Jason Momoa. I wish I could like pause it. I imagine these are humans. These are the issue engineers. It's like something's bad happening. Like that's an issue, like city or something. And a world event's going on. Say it again, nice and loud. Uh, seriously? Sure, come on. If nothing else, it'll give me leverage with your old man. Ah, that's your angle. Nice. <sighs> what I said was, I wish I hadn't been born into the assassins. I wish I had chosen this life. Is that good enough? Sure, but why is that? Because, because choice is the central idea of our creed. It underpins everything, right? It's about free will. It's about seeing the evidence before you and saying, yes, this is what I want, or no, this isn't for me. But when you're born into a group like this or any other, like I was, you get mixed signals. You get told over and over again, this is what we believe. These are the rules. This is reality. No deviation. And if you question it, oh, they look at you like you, like you killed a puppy. That's hardly free will. It's a weird irony when free will is your central belief, but nobody wants you to believe otherwise. I don't know how to say it exactly, but I always thought there was something self-destructive about our creed. If free will is the most important moral guidepost we have, we should be free to ignore it. To choose submission, for example. You know what I mean? Like, we should be free to side with the Templars. If it's really my choice, I could do that. Right. It's almost self-refuting. A democracy could democratically elect a dictator or choose to get rid of democracy altogether. Within our creed is the seed of its own destruction. That's what makes it powerful, I think. And fragile. Right, right. The more freedom you have, the more risky it is, you know? Anyway, my dad has mellowed over the years, but he was strict when we lived on the farm. We were in a tight ship. I never got the impression that I was free to choose my path forward. Our creed, our tenets, they were drilled into my head. By the time I was a teenager, I was following these rules out of a sense of duty. This was just what we did. That happens to a lot of organizations over time. The stagnation sets in, you know? The fundamentalism. Yeah. Following the rules becomes more important than achieving whatever goal you set out for yourself. And people start to lose sight of the reason the rules exist. That's called deontology, or a form of it. Following a rule for its own sake, and not for the consequences it has. Yeah, but that feels backwards, doesn't it? Well, I think so. Following a rule is the easy part. Praying, taking a sip of wine, munching on a wafer. Rituals that give comfort. But that's just going through the motions. It makes people feel like... like they're doing something. When the hard work is... 
Well, actually getting off your ass and doing something productive. I think people just want boundaries. Tight boundaries. They want to see the four walls that pen them in. I don't disagree. Anything outside that? Anything that makes life more complex? That's scary. That's why I envy you. You chose this life. You went through that process and you decided, yes, I believe in this. Sure. It didn't stop me from being an insufferable know-it-all as a teenager, but I see your point. I would have loved to have been a know-it-all. I knew nothing. Not until you guys found me. Yeah. It wasn't until I met you and Bex and Lucy that I knew. I knew I wanted to be an assassin. Oh, thanks, Des. Come here. Bring it in, bud. I don't normally like touching, but I'll make an exception now. I am not hugging you. You sure? Because I smell very nice today. Can you just turn that off? Hold on, I'll just set this here. Do you guys record everything we talk about? Not everything. But you've been using the Animus so much, I thought this was a good chance to learn some things about prolonged exposure. So I'm your guinea pig? No, no, my guinea pigs are all dead. The Animus was too much for them to handle. Cute. Can I ask you about the bleeding effect? Any recent flashes? Any memories resurfacing? Yeah, the usual things. Ghost images of Altair and Ezio a few times a day. Nothing intrusive, just brief moments. They pass quickly, almost without me noticing. Like a figure in the corner of my eye. Or remembering a dream from the night before. I did have one extended hallucination a few days ago. It was Ezio. He was older around the time he left Cappadocia. He was standing on the deck of a ship, alone. And through him, I could feel an intense regret or guilt. And it felt to me like he'd had a, a loss of faith in himself, in the creed, like he couldn't keep it up, couldn't stay true to his ideals. And as I watched him, I thought, is this the moment he decided he was done being an assassin? It felt like it. Anyway, most of my visions have been brief, lasting just a few seconds. They're like complete memories of small moments that appear suddenly out of nowhere, fully formed. It's a strange feeling. Okay, anything else? I'm starting to see Connor now, too. Though I hear his voice more often than I see him. I'm sure that will change. Oh, yeah, and yesterday, just before bed, I had a memory of being on a beach in the Caribbean with a bunch of sailors. Or maybe they were pirates. I don't know. No idea. Huh. We'll look into that. And how do you feel in general? In general? Well, I feel older, for one. Much older. And it's strangely comforting. I'm collecting the memories and skills and thoughts of so many people I feel like I've lived a few hundred years or more. Is it possible that if I do this for too long, it'll push my own memories aside? That I'll be everyone but myself after a while? It's possible. That's called identity substitution. It's happened before, but it's rare. And someone with your background shouldn't need to worry. My background? You mean someone with my genes? My abilities? You have ESU DNA. And that lets you see things and do things and withstand traumas that other people can't. And I can suffer in ways that others can't. That's not something to be proud of. You mean the apple? Yeah. It has a pull, Bex. It tugs at my brain. It talks to me. Teases me. Drives me mad. And what I did to Lucy. God damn it. Nothing is worth the damage I did. The pain I caused. I know. But you're special. That's the point. I'm not special, Bex. I'm lucky. That's all. I understand. We're assassins. It's our creed that makes us different, not our genes, not our blood. Anyone can join us. That's true. But let's leave that aside for a second. What I want to know is, have you ever had any Isu memories resurface? Isu memories? I don't... don't think so. I can't even begin to imagine what that would feel like. I think you'd know if you did. Maybe one day, we might be able to induce something. 
Jesus, let's fix the world first, okay? Before we start digging up my ancient ancestors. Deal. With my luck, I'll be related to some third-rate Isu like... like Sisyphus or something. <laughs> Way to aim high, buddy. <laughs> hey, you gotta. He's the one that got the coffee for everybody. Layla, thought you might be interested in this. Conversations that Bex and I had with Desmond back in 2012. Um, December, I think. Just, uh, candid talks, that's all. We didn't square any circles or write any beat poetry. But he did have some interesting insights into his time in the Animus and what it means to be an assassin. Anyway, have a listen. You might find you and he had similar experiences. So, uh, well, let me know what you think. Unless it's to tell me I sound like a total prat in these recordings. If that's the case, just say nothing. I mean, I did have a slight cold at the time I recorded these. That's probably why I sound odd. Anyway, I, 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 okay, I'm done anyway. So turn off. Turn off. Oh, it's actually just a button. Sorry, here we go. Oh! 
Come here a moment. Come here! Ah! <laughs> 
What is that he thing do? Bin um dir, Griefer. Let the sail out. Let's hear a story. Sing us a song. If you have a friend, one that we raise our shining blades like wolf teeth, they brightly glitter. Now the time for bravery calls.
Vassal has news of Sigurd. I should find him soon. See you, old friend. Were you tied up? A wee misunderstanding between myself and the good folk of the hamlets hereabouts. Your name, good kin? I'm Eivor of the Raven Clan. And now I've freed you, so go about your business. Wait! May I inquire? The dulcet timbre of your voice, the godlike strength of your gait. You are a warrior, yes? A lone skiff bobbing on the sea of opportunity. Wait! What is that on the horizon? Adventure! I... um... The stars prophesied our meeting. I am the glee woman Aswig the Mellifluous. You have heard of me? No matter. Destiny has made you my muse. I shall follow you, record your great deeds with poetry. This will not make great poetry, Eivor. You fleet of foot and long of gait. Oh, Eivor, do I pray to your fate. 
brave or risking life and limb. How proud am I to follow him. This will not make great poetry, Eivor. Do something. Anything. Eivor running with mighty speed to Flabbergast. Danger rears its ugly head. Eivor bulks and just stops dead. Fleet of foot and long of gait. Oh, Eivor, do I pray to your fate. Eivor, like a golden eel, breaks... I must be careful now. This will not make great... Wounds matching those made by Saxon weapons. I know where to look for my prey. So she oh she's still out there. Your death has been avenged, my friend. This will not make great poetry, Eivor! Do something! Running from the past with mighty speed to Flabbergast! Brave good aim! and swims with them! My muse returns! When day. When what? Leap of foot and long of gate! Oh, Eivor, do I pray to your... Enough. Stop following me. I cannot, for walking in your footsteps has let me sup at the cup of inspiration. You are my life's great purpose. Enough. I won't listen to your blabber anymore. First there was a famine, and now, look here, a feast. Fare thee well, Eivor of the Raven Clan. Your exploits will live on in me. Now I thank you, but please, take your leave. Fare thee well, brave hero. Perhaps we will meet again. Gods, I hope not. Lee woman. Oh, I thought I could uh, get that from here. Best not to draw attention here.
Kannst du hören, Toto? Jetzt noch? Dann hat ihr Schade ein Dortrich, seit das Herr Kahn war.
Sunin, guide me. I feel great. What I mean to say is, faith is paramount. Yes, for without it, Christ's sacrifice means nothing. He died to save us, did he not? From the original sin of Adam and Eve? Yet evil persists. Yes, evil persists, because he gave us free will. Does a newborn babe, slain by a despot, have free will? Yes. Uh, no, I mean, that is too simplistic. Or the priest, whose heart is torn from his chest by the wolf? Judas, who was predestined to betray the Nazarene? Uh, some argue Judas was used. Do my ears deceive me, Brother Hortbert? You question the scriptures? Declare Judas an innocent? A preposterous blasphemy! No, no, uh, that is not what I said. <laughs> Brother Cedric, am I not the most pious of his servants? Out! Out! Making new friends? A person's tongue gives you a taste of their heart, Eivor. And such information is often useful. And how do these sallow Christians taste? It was only a figure of speech, Eivor, and I have tired of it already. Is this how it must be between us? Of course not. I'm grateful that you have come. What happened in Mercia still puzzles me. Fulke saw something in Sigurd. A power, a legacy. What is it she wants? Her motives are difficult to fathom, but that can come later. Let's find your brother first. Agreed. If we do this, you'll earn the right to call me friend, ten thousandfold. So, what is your plan? We are deep in their god's heartland, a heathen and a heretic. To hunt Fulke, we'll need a Christian snare. Fulke is hardly a saint herself. These Christians abhor her strange ideas. True. But unlike us, she can carry herself as one of them. She won't hide from everyone, not with a prisoner in tow. So, where to begin? I've made a friend, Abbot Cunibert, full of pious fire, but with ambition that far outweighs his wit. And what does your friend Cunibert know? Come, I will introduce you, and we'll hear the full tale together. Have you found some peace in your time alone, Basim? I am always at peace, and never alone. I move among the people of the world with great joy. I watch them, study them, learn from them at all times. This is our duty, the Hidden One's calling. You know, for the first time since we've met, you sound more like you're a princess than yourself. <laughs> Surely Hytham sounds like me, if I have taught him well. Your creed and your tenets, you mean? That's right. And our sense of, how should I say, deep responsibility to the betterment of mankind. That's quite an ambition. But it doesn't explain what you see in Sigurd. My brother is not so generous. Ah, but your brother is someone special, important. And I want him to see that. I hope to show it to him. Is this not a blessed plot? God's own country. And this Eden should be given to his servants to tend. Abbot Cunibert, this is the Norse I spoke of. Ah, yes. And quite a fearsome one at that. Basim says you know the paladin Fulke. Indeed. The Lady Fulke passed this way not more than a month ago. We talked, we drank. Very pleasant woman. And where is she? Eivor will be your axe, Abbot. Whether to fell a tree, or hew the limbs from an enemy. What have you promised him? Oh, just a trifle, Eivor. A little problem I believe you can help me with. 
Speak your terms plainly, Abbot. I will decide if the bargain is worth my time. Ah! Your wolf shows its teeth, Basim. Let's cut to the point. What favor would you ask in exchange for Fulke? Some weeks ago, our elderman in Kent was called to God. A terrible loss. King Alfred has chosen his replacement, but has not yet announced the name. I must know it. Now. All of Kent will see soon enough which thane he has chosen. Why not wait? I want early access. To woo him. Before his exalted position is made public and every fool is at his door. Who else knows the chosen man? The king's emissary. Sent with a letter of congratulations to the new elderman. Intercept him and bring me the news. When I know the thane's name, we'll discuss how I might win his favor. Why not kill him in secret and petition Alfred for the seat? As a man of God, I cannot. Besides, he who stands behind the throne can better pull on the puppet's threads. This emissary, how will I find him? Tunbridge Monastery sent word that the King's men always pass a few nights in their hospitality. Begin there. I'll get the Elderman's name. You find Fulke. All in good time. Now, if we're done, I have business up the south coast. Falkenstone has the best fish in Wessex. Then I will find you there, when the Elderman's name is mine. Cunibert is ambitious, but well-connected. We will not find Fulke without him. I suppose we'll see. What will you do? I'm not done playing with these Christians yet. I will see you in Falkenstone. Stretch your wings, Sunan. Need to be careful here. Twenty-five, then twenty-six? They come and go and take my wits with them. What troubles you, old man? Please, I beg you. How many are there? I must know. How many what? The stones. Every time I count them, the answer is different. First twenty, then twenty-one. The fair folk made a madman of me. Rock cannot appear and disappear. I shall count them. Run round and round. Pick up your skirts. Still drag your ropes through the dirt. One. Your stone centuries. I've counted them. And? How many lords and ladies come to dance a jig? There are twenty-one. I am as sure as I can be. See? Never the same. Never the same! Please, count them again. You must. To save my wits. One, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 24, 25, 26. Somebody added stones and I wasn't looking. I cannot get the same number twice. Never the same. Never the same. Cobweb cloaks and magpie hats. Now there are 26. How can this be? See? Never the same. Never the same. Please, count them again. You must. To save my wits. Oh, somebody cut it. Hey, cut. Oh, what's going on? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, This is madness. They change each time. Don't close your eyes, or they'll steal the glinting flint scrabble it away. Perhaps there are 23. Ha! They have bewitched you too. Twirl and spin and dance and grin. Pyrak, it comes to bite your shin. Who came crawling from the moor like a fat black rabbit without any legs? I see you, glisten little imp. 27, 21, 23, 24, 22, 22, 22. I don't know how to help you. It seems as if the stones appear and disappear at will. You should not stay here. Leave. Leave before they claim you. The Screamer toy with me, casting his magic in England. Mm, what? That stone. Was it here before? And where's my mad friend? Damn this cursed place. Were you talking to the stone the entire time? It smells like a trap.
Best raise my hood here. Rich pickings. Better bring the crew. Show me what lies ahead. Alfred's emissary spent a few days here. Someone may know where he went. Hello there! Hope to see you again soon. Until... I have to go. See you soon. You tried to catch flies, or would you ask something of me? I'm looking for a man. He passed through here on the King's business. Oh, bugger off here, or I'll call the guards. Sick of people. You need to heal your own ills. How about you help me from the goodness of your heart, and then I'll leave you alone? A wise move, Mudwit. It so happens I did see Alfred's man. He's long gone, though. Maybe Gowan the Bard knows where. Where will I find him? Well, he was pissed as a newt. Last I saw, he was passed out in trees between the arbor and bridge. Well, now go find someone else to vex. There was a bard drinking with the emissary. I should find him. See if he knows anything.
you look important. Survey the area, Sudan. Swamp scarp can't have gone far. <laughs> Go, Zulin. Sweet lady. You there, you're alive. <laughs> Patience is a tired horse. Plodity plod plod. Another tottering teat sucker who can't hold his drink. Let's clear your head. you. Oh, what are you fed or wakes me? I'm the one you sing of, Bard. Stern of eye and scanned of mercy. Have you not seen the ravens feasting in my wake? Enough! Your word mangles are making my hair ache. You and Alfred's emissary were drinking in the tavern. Tell me where he went. Were we? I was so ale-addled. Perhaps a small and silver thing upon my palm might help me recall? Have some coin, and rent a proper bed for the night. Oh, bless you! For stories are my currency, friend. How else am I to make my living? A more honest profession? Plowing fields, milking cows. Manual labor? God's blood! There's a fortress to the southeast where paladins pray by night and fight by day. Dover, on the White Cliffs. My thanks. And in return, wisdom. Too much beer bibing will grow a fool in wit and words. My thanks, weaver of the obvious. Now leave me to my unholy punishment. Weaver of the obvious. The emissary made for Dover Fortress on the southeast coast. I don't know if 
upgrading this other thing and maybe rating of it so calculated Better to die than face my lords. I hope my Magister Magnus forgives me. For so long, I looked to him for guidance, for order. If your honor is slow, a true lord cannot forgive you. They cannot. <laughs> now I will turn my gaze to Warden, Tiwar, and Shunor. I will continue to turn until I find some forgiveness. You will spin and drill yourself to an endless button.
Cast about this lamp, my friend. Yeah! Need to cloak myself here. Like what's happening in real life at this current time. Stuff falling from the sky. how he can uh, harvest my, uh, ore from <laughs> meteors without knowing how to do it. Uh, yeah.
whistling moon river. in numero said Have a look, Sunin. Solum modo in paradisum. Pax eterna es una via ad emundationem propriae. Sabor Singulus ribus longe, incomprehensible gludas qui erat, disciplus es homine, vi fish monge, set ut a long cum sum chalan.
Aid me, be my eyes. Ut congregentur ad Marcus. I need your eyes, my friend. Condemnabitur inconvenientes calciamenta sunt mihi. Pono autem ut Deus vult hoc esse, heic patiar in nominis sui gloriam. Good day. What is your name? I am Avon of the Raven Clan. And are you a flighter? When the mood strikes. Do you wish to flight with me? Oh, no, certainly not. I don't engage in such things. Haven't a head for it. My brother, however, he is quite proficient. Ah, then you wish to compete with me. I should mention, my brother has taken a strict vow of silence. If you wish to flight, I will translate and relay his verses. I think I understand. Good. Hark! To those gathered round, wave your hands and rejoice. I shall trounce this poor fool without use of my voice. Such is his challenge. Do you wish to face him? I'll happily challenge you. S sorry, him. Here you are, my bet. Good. Now remember, it is not me you are flighting. I am but a conduit for his words. I will keep this well in mind. Good. He is ready. Come you closer, friend Eivor, and lend me your ear. The most cutting of flights from my mouth you'll not hear. But by proxy, I'll call you a milksop and boor. You're afflicted with terrible arrogance, but perhaps I am the cure. Your body is withered, your garments absurd. 
I'll topple you over with nary a word. I'm devoted to flights, though to silence avowed. You're a simpleton and a fool, and you should never be proud. Your visage is ghastly. I'm cowed by your stink. I should like to write more, but you're not worth the ink. So, a last parting phrase. You're as dim as they come. With such drivel to speak, I see why you keep mum. Your pitiful flighting has left me quite cold. So leave here with speed once you've paid me your gold. You've bested me, but I'll return. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good. I was so good, but now I'm so bad. Pax Eterna est una The failure Eivor returns. Will you compete again? I will. Here you are, my bet. Good. Now remember, it is not me you are flighting. I am but a conduit for his words. I will keep this well in mind. Good. He is ready. Come you closer, friend Eivor, and lend me your ear. The most cutting of flights from my mouth you'll not hear. But by proxy, I'll call you a milksop and boor. Though you speak through another, your flighting's still poor. Your body is withered, your garments absurd. I'll topple you over with nary a word. I'm devoted to flights, though to silence avowed. Though you choose to be quiet, your folly is loud. Oh my! Your visage is ghastly. I'm cowed by your stink. I should like to write more, but you're not worth the ink. So, a last parting phrase. You're as dim as they come. With such drivel to speak, I see why you keep mum. Very fine work. As an impartial observer, I must say you won. Thank you. My brother has a few parting words. You have bested me squarely and thus won the day. So take what you've earned now and hurry away. I will. Farewell to you both. Adheret lumbare ad furore de hominibus quasi stercus superrudit a scabra cuius. Multi autem sunt in numero, sed mente sua ad modum tenues esse. Be my eyes, Zunan. Non vivet in ignorantiae sue providentiae. Show me.
The emissary is somewhere here. Perhaps I can find the letter without bloodshed. The Bard said Paladins trained at this fortress. This will not be an easy fight. Dover. I always wanted to see the white cliffs of Dover. What do you see? This area is off limits. If I could steal the letter without killing the emissary, it would keep me out of trouble. Carry the king's word, but there's no hand to put it in. Alfred's chosen elderman is a thane called Tetmet. The abbot Cunebert will want to know. I should meet Bassam and the abbot in Falkenstern.
Stop clucking like a laying hen. I'm the one with the broken leg. Adley? Someone is stuck? My brother. Chasing some foolish legend that if you see old Hisser from above and catch his tail, he will grant you a wish. And what of your leg? Likely sprained, trying to climb up to rescue him. <laughs> we are a sorry pair. Stop clucking like a laying hen. I'm the one with the broken leg. At least grab old Hisser's tail while you're up there. Something is hissing. Jormungandr's are strengths. Are there snakes up here too? All right, all right. Well, you'll have to get down somehow. Can you see a haystack or something? A haystack? Are you mad? From this height? <laughs> That's certain death. No, my fate is sealed. I will just wait up here to die. Did you see a haystack? I'm not an assassin, I can't jump there. You made it up! You truly are a brave one! I'll help you down, but how is a big strong nose like yourself afraid of heights? And snakes! I don't know how I let my brother talk me into these schemes. I think I just give in to his endless golding. But I'm sick to the back teeth of him. Climb up on it, go in that cave of wolves on it, eat that red mushroom. Siblings are a source of great joy and equal misery. I too have a brother. Does yours put you in the maw of death every opportunity he gets? Come, let's get you down. And perhaps you can tell him how you feel. Talk of my feelings to my brother. I would rather let the snakes gnaw on my tender parts. This way, it's too high to get down from here. There, the ladder. Watch your step. <laughs> this way. There's two ships on the right side, ran into each other. Thank you, stranger, for bringing this waste of breath back to me. You're welcome. But what is the story you spoke of? Old Hissa? A pretty legend. He who catches old Hissa's tail will find her heart's wish granted. I found such a story in a manuscript, up in the tower. Then may it bring you more luck than it did us. Maybe you will even solve the serpent's mystery. Farewell. May Odin litter your path with riches. Goodbye. And keep each other safe. For a good brother is the truest treasure from the gods. Now see, you big lump. All that wailing, it was as easy as a hop and a jump. <laughs> keep that up, and I'll leave you here for the wolves. <laughs> oh. No. Look at your leg. Is it truly broken? No, sprained is all. But I'd like to see you get by without me. Couldn't even climb down a ladder without mewing like a newborn.
I was almost right, about ready to mount the horse. I saw this. Oh, 200. Fine, they make green. That was better than your scour hand or house or cow on works he hand. Oh, you must try my ale sometime. You must. My abbey brews the best in Kent. It certainly sounds worth the risk of my immortal soul. Ah, your god is rather a hard taskmaster. And your god forbids the mixing of wool and linen. It sounds to me like he's never heard of England. <laughs> Not all that is written in the scriptures is God's honest truth. I do a roaring trade at Reculver and Tunbridge. They pay well for my catch. The monks? Do those parchment skin Christians ever eat meat? Don't you believe in Jesus? They refrain because he died for our sins. No one will stop me sucking the marrow from a nice leg of lamb, not even God's seed. Well, I hope eternal damnation is worth it. The peasant's voice changed. But anyway, uh, God is always honest. Otherwise, he will not be the God of truth. Because that would be kind of... Kind of, it would be... Counterintuitive. Eivor, you have news? Kent's new elderman will be Thane Tedmund. Tedmund? Oh, the Lord is testing me. He is made mouse by you Danes. Barely leaves his fortress at Rue Sister. How might I gain his influence if he will not speak to me? Or to anyone? It is a puzzle. To inspire loyalty, Tetman must owe you something. Such as his life. Go on. A fortress stormed. A man kidnapped. If you beat back his enemy, saved him from sure death, his gratitude would... Swell. It would know no bounds. But that fortress will be harder to pry open than a nun's knees. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Has he any family we could hold for ransom? 
You could swoop in, rescue them, play the hero. There's nobody in this world that Tedmund cares more for than Tedmund. I could think on it, but we haven't much time. There's another way. Much easier. Are you hiding something, Basim? There is a lumber mill nearby, correct? Bemis Field. Alfred invests much in fortifying Wessex, and uses our forests to do so. The mill provides his wood. Tedmund is there. Impossible! How do you know? I heard rumors that Tedmund had been lured out of self-exile to manage work on the fortifications of Canterbury. Taking him from a lumber yard is less dangerous than assaulting a fortress. But your rescue attempt will not have the same flair. Is it worth it? It may still work. Yes. Yes. Bring him to the Megaliths. And Fulke? When I have Tedman's fealty, you shall have Fulke. Now go. I will rustle up a small rescue party. One more time, I'm telling you. If he says my boots are dirty or my hair needs combing, I will split him open. You're full of stuff, gas. You'll do what you want. wary of this abbot Bassett. He is self-serving and evasive. Can he really deliver Fulke? The abbot is a friend of Fulke's. That is clear. So long as he doesn't suspect our motive, we may have a chance. Indeed. This brings to mind a story. Perhaps you've heard of it. The Scorpion and the Frog. A children's story? A cautionary tale. The Scorpion wants to cross the river, but he cannot swim. So he enlists the help of the Frog. The frog agrees to carry him on his back, extracting a promise that the scorpion will not sting him. Let me guess. The scorpion reneges, blaming his nature, and both drown. But the scorpion crosses the river and stings an innocent man, killing him. So what does this tale tell us? That your stories are clouded and their meaning doubly so? It shows that every tale has a thousand possible outcomes. Many of which are surprised. Are you ready? It shows that every tale has a thousand possible outcomes, many of which are surprising. If the abbot does not deliver full... Bemisfield is just ahead. Lead. I will follow. I hope this chase will catch us a plump hen. Once the abbot has Tedman's gratitude, he will deliver full care. It will cost us nothing more than this. If that leaden wit keeps his word. Ah, you prefer to work in the shadows.
Survey the area, Sunan. The guards here are vigilant. Get back to work! Time is coin and you're spending mine! Do you dare to question the orders of the great Thane Tedmund? Throw a stone and here's a dozen men who do a better job than this. Come on, you lazy hounds. I don't pay you to lollygag. the house.
kids! No! No! Protect me! Stop catawalling and you'll live. Live? Oh, saints, protect me! Silence will save you, Tetmund. Silence, not your saints. <laughs> Flee, my friend. We have the man we came for. Does this venture not set your blood ablaze? You don't prefer working in the shadows? And so we have. To steal a man, take him with swiftness, and escape without anyone on our heels? We hide in plain sight. Such is our way. But only until the moment of success, the final strike. I prefer to act and speak plain. Kings and lords who do not are often misunderstood. Yet as a leader yourself, you cannot deny that subtlety and intrigue are a cloak you must wear. How many of your clan know the true circumstances of Sigurd's absence? Hmm. You see my point. A leader must know when to speak and when to stay silent. For silence is not always a lie. It can feel like one. You truly embrace the concept of hiding in plain sight, eh? To its very fullest. As I do in everything. Danes, in the name of Alfred, King of Wessex, I demand you release his royal subject into my care. Come no closer, Christian, else your man dies by my blade. Please, I I'm not the man you want. Keep your eye on this one. He'll be worth a hefty bounty. Any false moves and I will snip your heels. We have your man. Now let's finish the shadow play and be gone. Are you sure that's Tedmund? He's dressed as a lord, but that man is shorter and fatter than I recall. I'm not Tedmund. I, I, I'm not. I, I swear upon the holy rood, I, I am not Thane Tedmund. What in heaven's name is happening here? Who are you? Speak quickly, or I will slit your throat and leave you for the crows. Shergar. I, I'm called Shergar. Lord Tedman pays me a measly coin to serve as his double. Brother Shergar, you are far from Augustine's Priory. I, I left the cloisters many moons ago, Your Holiness. The monastic life was not my calling. We can use you yet, Shergar. Summon Tedman to a meeting. Get him out in the open. Tedman has no care for me or what I have to say. My orders come by letter, never by mouth. I hardly know the man. You have no use to us, then. Perhaps I should just kill you here and now. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Let, let, let me think, let, let me think. Oh, Danes, T to storm the walls, you need Danes. Th there's a raiding camp west of here I was told to be wary of. I, acting as Tedmund, I ordered a band of soldiers to capture them. 
If you hurry, you may be able to stop this. If another band of Danes wants to join our assault, we'll have the distraction we need to get inside Rusester. If the Saxons don't slaughter them first... I, I am still Tedman to the men in the field. I could speak with their captain, send his men away. It's a fearless plan. The Nordnia knit winding paths that cannot be unknotted. It seems Rusester was always in our path. Abbot, stay alert. We'll send word when we're ready to capture Tedmund. And this fool? He knows much of our plan. Do what you want with him. I won't risk our plan on the shambling of this fool. Come, Brother Shergar. And perhaps today would be the time to consider a vow of silence? An army of Danes is all we need to take the fortress. Let us hope. It is best to snap her a wasp with honey. Have you ever considered more subtlety? I leave manipulation to you, Basim. You appear to see it as an art. It is both art and science to bend a man to your will. And harder still to convince them that they are firmly in control. Shergar was quick to betray his lord. Do you not think he would sell us out as swiftly? Perhaps. Perhaps not. I do not presume to know a man's heart in so brief a meeting. His prattle was sad and ugly, like a weeping babe. You have little patience for chittering squirrels. And yet, I allow you to squeak in my ear, along all the roads and byways of Kent. Because you are wise, and you see the same qualities in me. That must be it. We are nearing the camp. Let us hope there are Danes enough to storm a fortress. Otherwise, this abbot's game is a long one. It must be played, if we are to reclaim Sigurd. We are too late. There is great horror here. Those who remain must be saved, whatever the cost. Now you pay. Your sister rides your tits so proud! We owe you our lives, friend. These Saxon whoresons would have killed us all. Yes, they would have. And now's your chance to hit back. March with us on Rusester and drain it of riches. I will gladly, friend. But we few will not break those iron-thick walls. And we have no allies in Wessex. None who could be called upon to attack their countrymen. Mercy, I will heed the call. Gidrich will provide our Viking a horde. We'll send a message to Oxenfordshire. The men of Mercia would gladly take a swipe at Wessex. What is your name, warrior? Runa Egelstotter. We need ships, Runa. We have a small fleet moored up river, but a naval chain blocks passage to Rue Sister's walls. I will remove it, and your people will bring their ships. Now, gather these fallen weapons and armor. Gidrich and the men of Oxenfordshire will need them to hide their Mercian origins. My warriors were denied Valhalla today. I cannot bear the idea of gifting their weapons to more Saxons. Their sacrifice was great. Their gift will be all the greater. They will know justice with our victory. It will calm their restless shades, I promise. Will your men bring the armor to the battle? And what is our plan? In the morning, you will go to Buckingham, remind Gidrich of his promise. When you have his bond, Meet me on the shore near Rusesta with the ships. Ah, but Cunibert must be warned in advance. He'll need time to muster his rescue party. Runa, that is your task. I will tell you where to meet him before you leave. All seems in order. At first new light, I will leave. Good. 
That gives us time to drink. You've traveled so far to carry out your duty. Is this the life of a hidden one? Always on the move? No. Mine is not the usual path. The creed does travel. Our ideals are universal. We believe that. So there's nowhere you call home? No place I call home. No. Mid. <laughs> For me, home is family. But I have no family. No one? Not even Hytham? Parents, brothers, all dead. I lost my parents when I was nine winters along. Without Sigurd, I would have... I would have... There is always one unbreakable bond. Yes. Children. <laughs> they bewilder you. They can cause you so much worry. Fill you with joy. Even stop your heart. And if you're lucky, they replace you. I was not so lucky. I had a son. I miss him terribly. Even now. I am sorry, Asim. He was taken from me. By someone I trusted. A friend. A mentor. A man who I would trust with anything. trust with anything can take everything he took all I had all I had says there will not be an easy nut to crack. Time to prepare. Here in the ancient kingdom of Kent, the Jutes have brought me to where his fire burns through traces of the Nephilim. Here the Lord speaks to me again. He warns of betrayals, of struggles, of the trials of the first ones. 
I do not always understand his message. If he is warning me, it is because he believes I am worthy. He says there is one angel still trapped. She who must be released or joined. Must I find her? She. Here in the ancient kingdom of Kent, the Jutes have brought me to where his fire burns through trace. Stretch your wings, Sunan. cautious around here.
Go, my eyes. Need to clear this fort and break this chain to get our ships safely upriver. The mechanism should be inside. in the bushes for cover. Let's see. Today is not a good day to be the Thane. Why? What have you heard? Slashed and disemboweled by sharp weapons. Saxon blade from the look of it.
Killer has been slain. Rest well, stranger. ground in the bushes. to get on the other side. With the chain down, Gidrich and the ships can get through. I need your eyes, my friend.
up the sails. Hey, calm down. Hold on, good. Eivor, we await your orders. You brought your weapons and armor. Aye, Raven Tamer. Good. Now we dig in and wait for our friends. Well met, old friend. When the chance arrived to lodge an axe in the sod of Wessex, you thought of me. Such an honor. Is everything else in place, Eivor? Are we ready to take Rusester? Rally our army. We will drag this mouse from his hole.
we'll see to it. is holed up in the tower keep. Press forward!
You take this fortress! Kill me, and all of Wessex will rise against you! You dare to take this fortress, Dane? Alfred's army will smear your innards across the battlements. We are not here for stone and sand, Thane Tetmund. I shit on you! You and your toy gods! I will not bow to you like some puppet's lord! I would rather die! How much will your king pay us to keep your sniveling head upon your neck? An army marches upon us from the south. A holy man from St. Hadrian's Priory, backed by a field. Ah, then, Abbot. Kinnebert? God be praised. If riches are all you care about, the Church has it in abundance. If the terms are fair, you'll have your freedom. A chest or two of silver for a shit-stained sewer rat. Stay quiet, or I'll not be able to stop my friend from slitting your throat. Ah! Watch yourself, heathen! You handle me too roughly! You will die for the indignities you've showered upon me, Dane! I mean no offense, Thane. You're only a hefty ransom to me, nothing more. This is why you batter down my gates, kill my men for a purse of grubby coin? You have no honor! Enough! I'll return you to... Return you to your men. Ah. 
You there! Heathens! Let this good man go, or suffer an iron sickness. And what do you offer us in return? Your lives? We lost many good men storming this keep. It will not be in vain, Christ's slave. Twenty chests of silver! Give them all they ask, Kinnebert! A hefty sum that will leave God's coffers hollow? I cannot give it up without some assurance. Tedmund, you extort me in return for my life? You were swiftly met, Abbot. Not long after these... these scallious worms took my fort. On the Lord's bidding, Tedmund, at prayer, a terrible vision befell me. A host of heathens, your life in danger. A coincidence I find rather... <coughs> rather ominous, Abbot. Do you... <coughs> God help you, man. Are you well? Air! I need... I need air! He's dead. The work of poison, no doubt. No, 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 no! Rouse the man! He cannot be dead! He must not be dead! Poison? How does the man die of poison in our arms? Many great kings and paranoids have carried poison in times of war, as an alternative to capture and ransom. A catastrophe! Alfred will choose another and... By the saints! Alfred! How will I explain this to the king? We followed this road to its end, Cunebert. You may not like where it led, but you owe us our half of the bargain. You shall have your paladin. I need a day. Return to my abbey tomorrow, and you shall... Oh, dear, oh dear. These delays are grinding at my bones. We should abandon Cunebert. Find full care ourselves. Peace, Eivor. Speak with Giedrich and relieve him of his oath. I'll meet you at Cunebert's abbey. You fought like beasts, escaped from your hell today, Giedrich. Your oath to me is fulfilled. It was good to stand shoulder to shoulder with you against the pox dogs of Wessex. May our friendship endure. This tangle briar of Christians and lords means nothing to me. I'm here for Sigurd. I understand. When you find him again, come see me. We'll feast and sing with mead and friendship to warm us. Agreed. This place is heavily guarded. What? They're not done yet? Okay.
The other side must be barred.
away now! No escape with your face! Your life for that! Did you see the chin up?
It's too quiet here. Where are the brothers? Or the abbot's men? I would say well met, brother. But I cannot shake off the needle itch of dread. Is something wrong? I followed the abbot here, kept him in my sight. But the monks, his servants, I have seen nothing of them. Dead? I do not think so. But there is no good here in this grave hush. And where is the abbot now? In his quarters. Come, and be on your guard. Does this have the stench of betrayal to you? Why would the godly shepherd ally with the heretic? Cunebert is a man who craves power and position. With Tetman dead, he must find it somewhere else. There is truth in that. Keep your eyes and blade sharp. Cunebert, your guests have arrived. Supper's ready. The dear abbot sent me a warm invitation, said my friends were eager to meet with me. It's early for supper, I know. But Kinnebert's ale goes so well with roasted lamb and cinnamon blueberry peas. I couldn't resist. Where is my brother? Is he... is he not here? Mon dieu. I never told him. Kill her. And we'll never find Sigurd. Sit, Ava. Eat. And let me tell you the tale of a man who talks with gods. You mock me. I've killed for much less. Of course you have. Isn't that the way of this ugly world? We call the sheep and thin the flock as we see fit, you and I. Most who walk the earth are little more than talking blood bladders. Wasted flesh. But not Sigurd. Sigurd is something else. Sigurd has been touched. He is deified. The gods, they speak through him. You lured him in with that lie. Your words are bile and blight. You should have listened, Eivor. I tried to tell you. The gods are real and their power is within our grasp. Ah! You will never find him. Not till I have had my fill. To old friends. This really is delicious, Kinnebert. Is it cloves I taste? Well, that concludes supper. Kill them, and bring their bodies to my sanctum in Canterbury. They will be upon us soon. Maybe there is another way out.
Fulkay let slip that her sanctum is at Canterbury. She did. And with no cause. I'd approach the place with caution. It may be a lie. It may be. But it's the only lead we have. I hope all this innocent sacrifice is worth the trouble. It's Sigurd. My brother. Of course it is. Then come. Let us dive into the Maw of Death. I was never keen on seeing my winter years. This will not be for nothing, Eivor. We will find Sigurd. It's not just him. I want Fulke to suffer. This land of summer, mists and forests, dreaming darkly. Yeah. I see secrets, and I want to know England. All of it. And yet it rounds on us at every turn, snarling like a cornered dog. I begin to despair of ever settling here. Perhaps the stars write your path, and you will never have a home here. We miss the land of your birth. I have long been away, but it is fiercely beautiful beneath the vanity, arrogance, and pettiness of men. I should like to see it. You could if you wish. My father was an architect, a builder of wonders. The great mosque of Samara, his masterpiece. Another man. Who played the Caliphate's game better took the credit. He was exiled and died in poverty. Your faith sours. What of loyalty? Shared stories round the hearth. Warm nights, bodies, and the tender love of another. There are some who are worthy. A scant few that tower above the solid mass. Men and women no! of vision and valor. Sigurd is one such man. He is. Fulke isn't wrong on that score. I fear for him, Basim. I cannot rest until he's safe. Nor will I, my friend. The practice of learning has waned considerably in England since the days of the Romans. What books they still have, they keep locked away in their churches, hidden from the eyes of common folk. Thralls and churls cannot read. What would be the point? They could learn. The church could teach them. So much of human history would be open to them. Aristotle, Pythagoras, Euclid, ancient knowledge lost to all but a few hard-headed men of the cloth. You have studied these works yourself? In my youth, I was consumed with a passion for understanding. I spent many hours... Yeah! Like that. A seminary? A great library, full of the greatest learning of mankind. For a boy seeking answers, it holds many riches. One day, I was sitting cross-legged, devouring a study by the great astronomer Al Khwarizmi. With the swiftness belying his years, the papers were plucked from my grasp by the great man himself. His presence stole my voice. He was kind and open-hearted. He showed me such scientific wonder. And what did you learn there? Yeah! by planets, equations that crackled and sparkled with divine intelligence. I asked the great man, is this what it is to know God? You saw your God's hand in the rooms. I found wisdom, and I have been searching for more ever since. Yeah! There is great vastness outside ourselves, Eivor. Most only notice a few grains of sand. But some, like Sigurd, I believe, see the end. Oh, my brother! Die!
were speaking. <laughs> Most only notice a few grains of sand. Yeah! Like secret weapon. See the endless flow of the hourglass. What you see in Sigurd, is this what Fulke sees as well? I believe it is. We will find no friends in Canterbury, so try not to draw attention. This place reeks of the piety of priests. This land of summer, mists and forests, dreaming darkly. I see secrets, and I want to know England. All of it. And yet it rounds on us at every turn, snarling like a cornered dog. I begin to despair of ever settling here. Perhaps the stars write your path, and you will never have a home here. Do you miss the land of your birth? I have long been away, but it is fiercely beautiful beneath the vanity, arrogance, and pettiness of men. I should like to see it. You could if you wish. My father was an architect, a builder of wonders. The great mosque of Samara, his masterpiece. Another man who played the Caliphate's game better took the credit. He was exiled and died in poverty. Your faith sours. What of loyalty? Shared stories round the hearth. This place swarms with Fulke's people. Sigurd will be well guarded. Caution and subtlety should be our path. Ready? Follow me. This is a trap. Why would Fulke give us her sanctum? She baits us. Cocksure and arrogant. But she cannot see failure in her path. Her fearful wit would say otherwise. <laughs> Whatever we find there, keep your head. You chastise me like a child, Basim. I guard you like a father. Nothing is served with your brutal end. You have much to do in this life. I know it. More riddles, sly tongue. No riddles. I sense a greatness within you both. Your destiny is not to stain the stones of this godhouse with your blood. Asked about this lap, my friend. It 
If she's still here, I will burn this Christ house to the ground. They've breached the doors! Protect the Sanctum! So we are to blunder in like an ox? This must be the way to Fulke's Sanctum. Then let us go. Place. It's riddled with the stench of her. Help me, Basim. Sigurd is within.
Have a care, Eivor. You will play into our hands. What does it mean, these word tangles that speak of elves and demons? The plans to the great fortress in Wessex. Is there something here we can use to breach it? This is a sick tapestry she wove. For every drop of his blood she spilled, I will take a meat horn more. Details on the Order of the Ancients. Fulke ranks high among them, but is not the head. The Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Hmm. Tell me that you found something. Anything we can use! I may have. A fortress in Sussex. The Order trained soldiers there. 
We must be sure. Secret is running out of time. Anything else? Documents of interest to the Hidden Ones. Hytham will surely want to look. But for Sigurd, Porchester is our only lead. <sighs> if he is in Porchester Castle, we'll need a massive army to crack its walls. I have many friends in England now. If I call on them, they will come. They will. Basim. She severed his arm clean off. Can a man survive such a loss? Physically, he can. Mentally, it's hard to say. So much stress can drive a man to despair. If you suggest he might take his own life as Tedman did, banish that idea. I must tell my people at the settlement that their Jarl remains a captive. They will not take it well. We will not fail again, Eivor. I'll scout ahead and send word to the settlement when I know more of Porchester. Be ready.
they see me, this will get messy. He be in come four into sept sep. Where is he? Where is Sigurd? He... he's alive. But not with you. Where is he? Dag, not now. I need to speak with Ranvi. You never found him, did you? Tell us, Eivor! We deserve the truth! I need to speak with Ranvi. Step aside, now! You never found him. Because you didn't look! <clears throat> I see you, Eivor! I know what you are. Eivor, you come alone. I fear what that means for Sigurd. I... I could not find him. That madwoman Fulke, she... She slipped away, took him to Sussex. We need an army. Call on our alliances. Remind them of their oath to me. We must act before... Before... Before what, Eivor? She tortured him, Randri. Did unspeakable things. Severed his arm and left it as a gift. I fear she means to kill him. Slowly. Gods.
Stop there, Wolfkist. This ends now. Dag, turn around and walk away. Your habits are not my own, Eivor. I do not flee responsibility for the sake of my glory. I stand firm with my people. For many months, I have stood at your side, keeping faith in Sigurd's judgment, because I believed in him and his vision. Do as Eivor commands, he told me, and I have. Against my better judgment, I did as you have asked me. And where has that left us? Without a Jarl? Without a purpose? Watching you chase glory around this land like a spooked hare! You could have come to me in confidence, Dag. But that offer is gone. I have no need of it! My mind is fixed. Hear me all! I challenge Eivor for the leadership of this clan until Sigurd is safe home! Walk away, Dag. No! We fight to the death! You spew nonsense, Dag. This is absurd. Enough! Let the circle be made! I'll crush you on their foot! Please! Please, both of you! Is that the best you can do? Fool's path, Dag. This does not need to happen. A coward to the last. Have courage, Eivor. I will make it quick. Stop! This does not need to happen. A coward to the last. Have courage, Eivor. I will make it quick. What's the matter, Eivor? Are you scared? Only for what I must do. Do you not see what you do? There's no honor in this. What do you know of honor that Sigurd did not teach you? You suckle at his teeth and then leave him to die! Should have listened to me. You might have seen. I would grant you exile. Leave this place, but go with your life. Spare me your pity and fight! So be it. You leave me no choice. Please! Please, both of you! You could have waited. You could have come with me. You are a fool, Dag. You see why it has gotten you. Silence! You... 
If I had any pity, I would not lavish it on this poor fool. He forced my hand. Yes, and the cost of disrespect is death. You said it yourself. All he demanded, you gave him. That should be enough. I have no need for one so fragile. He fought for what he believed in. Heroes. Does that not count for something? Does it? You killed him all the same. What is the true cost of disrespect? The choice lies with you. You should not have come to this, old friend. Take this, and fly to Odin's Hall. Whatever you sought in this life, May you find it in the next. Go to your homes. I will lay him to rest. Go to your homes! Dag accused me. Betrayal. He accused me of breaking my oath. And this, this is the answer I gave him. Now you will hear the truth unmanaged. None, none more than me wishes for Sigurd's safe return. You know this. You know this. All of you. And I will burn the fields. And dredge the rivers of Wessex. To find him! That! That is my oath! That is my oath. I will find Sigurd. You will not be without your Jarl, as I promise. You died, proud and defiant. I cannot begrudge you for that. I miss hearing you tell your stories, old friend. But I remember them well. Mouse! How are you, my boy? Stop talking about Mouse, you idiot. I wonder what became of you, if anything remains of such a strong spirit.
Aid me. Be my eyes. Here you are. More relics for your collection. Let me see what you have. Wonderful. And here is something for you. Bring me more like this. I'm off. Be well, friend. Valet, Eivor. Let's see you, old friend. Eivor, Altergate? How do you feel, Eivor? I would rather not talk about it. I understand. I want to see the Alliance map.
What about Lincolnshire? A rather boisterous man named Hunwald arrived recently, wishing to speak with you. On a matter of great importance, he said. Where is he now? Down at the docks, carousing with my scouts and scaring the fish from the river. He waits for you with great eagerness. He sounds charming. I will meet him at once. Protect your ears. Petra. Eivor, how are you? I should go. Let's talk again soon. Eivor, strange times these. Oh. Even when Dag was younger, he had a streak in him. Hate to see it go that way. But you did the right thing. Can't imagine what you are feeling. Anyhow, you probably need something, eh? I would like to see what you have in stock. Ah, that one's pretty good. I do good. I must be on my way now. Goodbye. Put that gear to good use out there. I've got some new pieces with your name on them. What have you got for me today? Anything you find, bring it to me. Made from only the finest materials. I'll be sure to keep these in stock for you. Can't have too many. Is that everything? I must take my leave. So long. Always a pleasure, Eivor.
I hope you all enjoyed, and I will catch you later.